Okay. This is part two on the love of God. We need to prepare our hearts to love one another. I, I know that the churches do what they can to feed the hungry. I, I, you know, I've been in the soup lines. I've been on the streets. Maybe maybe not living in the streets, but I lived in my van for several years or so because I had no place to go. You know, having to work and you go into Walmarts, things like that. You see a lot of people living in their vehicles because they have no place else to go. They can't afford rent. And, you know, it, as simple as this. You look at Abbotsford, for example. There's enough churches there. If they really wanted to, they could all take someone that's on the street into their home and look after them. It might be a hardship. You know, I might be might going to have to put up with a lot of things. But you know, if if Jesus was here, that's what he would do. If he had a family, that's what he would do. He'd say, come on in. Let, you know, let me, you know, let us help meet your needs. And the reason why this is not happening is because of fear in the hearts of the believers. If we have the manifest love of God in us, then there would be no fear, right? You know, we have to use judgment and discernment. You don't take someone in your home that that's going to be a threat, but if we, if we walk in the gifts, we, we would know. Maybe that person has, maybe he's on his last bit of hope that he needs to hand up, right? So we need to really learn to get back to where our grand folks and all that were. I can remember my grandmother, she she loved everybody. She had a love for everybody. That was the genera generation before mine. But you don't see it now. You don't see it in younger people. And, and the cell phones are probably the worst contamination that's ever come into the church because everyone loves their cell phone. They're addicted to their, to their cell phone. It's, it's causing separation. And there will be a day when the, when the asteroid and deep impacts happen. There's not going to be no cell phone. That, that's, God's going to make sure of that. Because it's all leading up to the mark of the beast. And especially this 5G. If you don't understand about this 5G, it's mostly military bands. And they, you know, the military can use 5G to turn your, turn a family against each other, right? Because they can get right into your mind. And they can, they can use mind control to turn brother against sister and sister against brother and father against mother and mother against father. And it's going to happen. You're going to see it happen, right? But we have to... Get back to the place where we start loving one another, even if it hurts, even if it means emptying out our wallets or taking someone into our house. Because you know, because because God is He's watching. He's watching. Say, so who do you love? Do you really love your neighbor? Right. And so this is going to prepare us for the outpouring of the Father's love. There's a revival about to. Uh, come to the west coast of Vancouver. We're in a window of, of a mega earthquake right now. And David Terrell, God's prophet to the world, he saw this many years ago, that before this revival broke out on the west coast, there was a major earthquake in the area, in the west coast. And you're going to see a lot of people that have homes, they're going to be on the street, you're going to see Abbotsford buried underwater because when, the, when this 30 meter, 20 meter wall of water comes in up the Fraser, it's going to flow over the over the dikes and, and Abbotsford's in one big fishbowl. So it's going to be a lot of trouble coming, a lot of chaos coming. You're not going to be able to, you know, it was years ago that uh, God raised moved through the Mennonite community and 
given dreams and visions and prophecies and about what's coming, the judgments and, and all that. But it, it got to be such a hot topic. You know, you know, people got in there and put dates. Then everything was buried. It, it, it destroyed it. But judgment is coming uh, under correction to bring us to a place where we can be ready to, to receive the outpouring of God. And if we don't have, if we can't love our brother and sisters, it doesn't matter about how much faith that we have. If we don't have, if we can't do the simple things like loving one another, and you know, especially one another in, in the church, to make sure the needs of the people are met, not just the pastor's needs, but the physical needs of the people. That's where it starts. Then that's going to help prepare us to receive this uh, next move of God. And as time goes on, the cities are going to get worse. You know, blood's going to run the streets. It's just a matter of time when uh, jihad is, is launched. You know what's happening over in Europe right now? In Britain, England, France, Germany. It's going to happen here in Western Canada. In Eastern Canada. It's coming. What are you going to do then? So we need to get the love in our hearts. And to be ready for, for this outpouring. I'm going to stop it here. I've said all this in these two, two parts so far. And to prepare you to set a stage for what I'm about to bring forth in this third part. I'm just doing this verbatim. God's put it in my heart. You know, I was laying on my bed there and I, I couldn't sleep. I was tore up. You know, thinking about the love of God and where it's gone. We're not seeing it. We're not seeing it being manifest like it was in the past. You know, the love of many has gone cold. And you know, God wants to wake up the church, and, and it's it's not you know the revival, revivals of the past are are gone. God's God's going to do a new thing. Anyway, I come back in in part three. <laughs>